Maureen Solomon. Before the very revolutionary information that Dr. Douglas will unfold for us here today, I think it would be a wonderful idea to claim the promises of God, where he says, being anxious for nothing, but in everything, with prayer and supplication, let your request be made known unto him. We have the ultimate answer. We have the ultimate good news. Our future is as bright as the promises of God. Now that said, I want to introduce you once again to Dr. William Campbell Douglas, who is about to drop the other shoe about AIDS and tell us things we have never heard before anywhere. Dr. Douglas, thank you so much for coming back on Accent on Health. Glad to be here, Maureen, again. Now, this is a very frightening portion of this program and of the information you're about to give because, first of all, I'd like to ask you, how did AIDS start? Well, it didn't start uh, the way that uh, we've been told. And this in itself is... It wasn't great. a greenback monkey. It wasn't the, it wasn't the uh, African green monkey, no. Okay. Because monkeys don't have AIDS. No animal has AIDS until it has been run through a laboratory, which I'll go into later. It's not a natural disease. If it was, we would have seen it uh, a few thousand years ago, perhaps. But this is a new disease, and we'll go into that later about well, what I mean by not being a natural disease. Uh, AIDS uh, did not start by uh, a monkey uh, biting someone, as I mentioned before, because just the simple arithmetic doesn't work, and the virology doesn't work, and the genetics doesn't work. Uh, you can examine the, the uh, genetics of the AIDS virus, and it doesn't fit with the green monkey. There's no way in the world that this could have happened. And it's very puzzling and, and disturbing to, to say, well, why are these top scientists in this country telling us this little story? You mean story? it's not endemic, then, to the greenback monkey? Absolutely not. All right. All right. Okay, here's what okay. happened. There was, a, uh, as I mentioned, a, an article on the front page of the London Times explaining how AIDS got to Africa. It said that the smallpox vaccine, which 75 million Africans were vaccinated with, triggered AIDS in Africa, was the way they put it. It said it triggered AIDS in Africa. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not quite right, but I, w I don't want to criticize them. They did a wonderful job to report it at all. Yes, and at yeah. the time, uh, we didn't understand all this. But it didn't trigger it. However, uh, we do know that the AIDS, the, uh, the smallpox vaccine was contaminated with AIDS. And that's how AIDS got to Africa. Was it contaminated by accident? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I'm not here to give my personal opinion. I have my personal opinion. I have very strong <laughs> opinions. But I'm, I'm sure you do. I'm not going to give Knowing them, you, I'm sure you do. <laughs> I'm not going to burden your audience with that. I'm going to tell them the facts. <clears throat> and they have to draw their own conclusions as to whether it was an accident or a non-accident. Uh -huh. If it was a non-accident, uh, then it was an accident, right? Okay. And, well, if you know, some, either someone made it happen or it happened by accident. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. In other words, in one, way, in one sense it's genocide, in the other it's manslaughter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? That's your choices uh -huh. as far as I can't think of any <laughs> no. third, uh -huh. third choice. Uh -huh. So how, where did, the, uh, where did this, this smallpox uh, vaccine uh, come from? It came from the United States. And where in the United States did it come from? Well, as far as we can tell, it probably came from Fort Detrick, Maryland, which is, incidentally, the National Cancer Institute. They don't call it Fort Detrick anymore, uh, Biological Chemical War Warfare uh, Unit. They call it the National Cancer Institute, which I it, think is interesting. Fort Detrick used to be our Biological Warfare Center, well, right? Well, used to be or still is. It still or, is, okay. Whatever, I, I but don't now know. they call it the National Cancer Institute, the National NCI. Cancer Institute, okay. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we say, well, if this is not a uh, natural virus, then how, where did it come from? Well, it happens to be called a retrovirus, which means that it's a laboratory-produced agent. It did not exist before. It could not have existed before. It would have been seen long before this. Are you saying that AIDS, the AIDS virus is a man-manufactured virus? Exactly. It truly is? Yes. It's, a, it's truly a man-made virus. You see, these retroviruses, as they're called, do not uh, appear in a particular animal species until it has been run through tissue cultures of that particular animal. Now, until about 20 years ago, there were no, there were no human tissue cultures, only animal tissue cultures. And then, um, unfortunate, and unfortunately, someone discovered how to do it. And then they could start running these viruses through human tissue cultures. If you take the virus of a pig 
and you run it through a tissue culture of man, the, the virus forgets how to infect the pig altogether. It becomes a virus of man. Wow. And this mm -hmm. does not happen unless you do it in a laboratory in tissue culture. It's impossible to do it any other way. There's no jumping, as uh, one of the scientists said, is speaking for the government. Well, it, it jumped from, from, uh, from uh, monkeys to man. It doesn't happen. There are very few instances of this. One is rabies, of course. There are exceptions to this. But that happens maybe once every million years. It just isn't highly, highly unlikely that this, that this happened. And as I said, from a number standpoint, it couldn't have happened anyway. So we have a, a virus here that suddenly appeared in Africa, suddenly appeared in Haiti, suddenly appeared in southern Japan, suddenly appeared in Brazil, suddenly appeared in the United States, and suddenly appeared in New Guinea all at the same time. Well, that monkey must have been a jet pilot running around doing an awful lot of biting it to, to have all this, ha you know, the whole thing is ridiculous. Uh -huh. It's just ridiculous to knowing how this thing developed. And the numbers don't substantiate it, is that correct? That's correct, it's impossible. Because if, if the virus, as I mentioned, doubles every year, and then you'd have to have a lot of monkeys doing a lot of biting to have 75 million people infected mm -hmm. in Africa alone. The thing that just blows me away is here we're talking about 75 million people in Africa now infected. And uh, as you say, it could not have happened by a monkey transmitting it one-on-one. -on -one. Otherwise, I believe there would be 8 million, uh, excuse me, 8,000 cases yeah, at this point. Yeah, 5 to 8,000 cases. 5 to 8,000 right. cases. Instead, we've got 75 million. That's correct. Which means somehow they must have gotten it all at the same time. Exactly. And you're indicting the vaccination, I'm the smallpox? the World Health Organization. The World Health Organization. They're the ones who conducted the, who? the program. Uh, and of course, the National Cancer Institute and the National Institute of Health, the NIH, this is all combined together. You can't separate them, really. Uh, you can't tell well, where one begins and the other one leaves off and where they're working. We don't really know. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not, I don't think we were privy to that kind of information. Yes, we peons aren't. That's no, right. That's we true. don't know what's going on. We just get a little tidbit here and there. Yes. Now, the best way uh, for your, your, uh, your viewing audience to understand a lot of these things is going to be uh, through some pictures that we'll show in a minute. But first, uh, I'd like to mention the, the homosexual problem with AIDS. Yes. Obviously, they did not get it from smallpox vaccination, but we don't do smallpox vaccination in this country anymore. We don't have any smallpox, vac any smallpox in this country. So how do they get AIDS? Good question, isn't it? Yes. Well, it appears Why don't we answer that when we get back from this right. break? That way we'll be sure and hold them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you're not having any difficulty with this one at all as far as paying attention. This is revolutionary. It's controversial. And praise God that there's one medium you can get it on Christian television. Okay. We've just heard Dr. William Campbell Douglas make some revolutionary statements about AIDS, that it is a man-manufactured virus. Now, Dr. Douglas, can you prove that to us? Yes, the best way, I think, to uh, illustrate it to your viewers is to give them a little virology lesson. Oh, little, dear. I know you okay. hate for, science, boring. right? Okay. Yes, right. But this won't be boring, but We need I to promise. understand that, no, uh, it, it's and, very uh, necessary. Yeah, they will clearly understand what I mean if they see these pictures, so let's give okay. a little virology lesson. and. Uh, <laughs> Go to our screen, all right? All right, this is, uh, my, uh, my artistic work is not the best. Uh, as you can see, I'm not an accomplished artist. This is called a bovine leukemia virus. It's a virus of cattle. Now, it has a very characteristic look to it. When I was in medical school, they told me the viruses are little tiny little particles, you can't see them, and they're little dots, you know? Mm -hmm. They have no personality. Well, they have a lot of personality. Uh, so let's look at the next one, and you'll see uh, a, uh, another virus that's uh, very characteristic in its appearance. And it's called the sheep visna virus. Looks like a pork chop in the middle there, doesn't it? Now, this is also very characteristic. And one of the basic rules of virology is if a virus looks like another virus, then that's what the virus is. Mm -hmm. They're very they have their own personality. If it looks like a duck and yeah, acts right, like a duck exactly. and walks like a duck, it's a duck. Okay. Now, this is the bovine visna virus, which mm -hmm. is a combination of the top two that we showed you. And it's also very characteristic looking, isn't it? And here's one called the bovine syncytial virus, which is also found in cattle, and it causes leukemia. All these causes ca cause cancer in, uh, in animals, in sheep and cattle and so forth. And uh, this is, uh, I put a question mark by it, because what's, what's going to be next? There seems to be a new one coming up all the time. I mm -hmm. think the next one's going to be the papilloma that I mentioned to you before, that okay. uh, uh, is also a sexually transmitted cancer. All right, so how do these uh, viruses, then, that we've just seen, how, how do they prove the fact that... Uh, 
AIDS is a man-manufactured okay. virus. I'm going to, now we'll show you the second set of slides, and you're going to see a remarkable coincidence between the ones you just saw, okay. which are uh, cancer and leukemia in animals and cancer and leukemia in humans. You'll you're going to tell me then that the virus under the microscope is in fact identical. You're going to see a very surprising comparison here. And so because it is identical, that means it is it That's then, exactly right? That's exactly right. Okay. That's exactly um, right. All right. Um, then, and how does this prove then that this is a man-manufactured virus? Well, um, we know that if you, if you combine these two viruses, uh, the first two I showed you, you get that third one, the little bar in it, called mm -hmm. the bovine vicinal virus, which yeah. is AIDS. All right, so in other words, a man or someone had to uh, combine the two viruses? They combine the two viruses a... and run them, ran them through tissue culture cells, and then they come out uh, a virus that is man is susceptible to. Couldn't have been made any other way? No. All right. Impossible. Let's, let's see the, the next uh, group of slides. Animal cancer, BLV. That's the, right. that's the animal cancer, and notice okay. how it looks. Here's HTLV1 in man, which looks identical to it. This is a form of infectious leukemia in man. Okay. Called HTLV1. AIDS 2. Okay. Son of AIDS, whichever you want to call it. <laughs> All right, it looks just. Uh, and it's okay. highly infectious. All right, here's the vice. That, that's the sheep, this now, that's the cancer in sheep. Uh huh. And here's uh, the uh, same thing in man, and it looks just identical to it. It causes brain, uh, brain rot. Bring All it to right, it. it's the same yeah, virus. It looks identical. Okay. It looks identical under the microscope. In other words, now an animal is not species specific anymore because it can, it's gone it's to an animal. To, it's specific to humans now. Okay. Now that's the bovine vista, the combination of those top two I showed you, and here's AIDS. Do you mm -hmm. notice a slight resemblance? Mm -hmm. They look exactly alike. Mm -hmm. they, they are, are the exactly same. alike. Mm -hmm. And the basic rule of virology, if one looks like the other, then it is the other. Okay. So the bovine vista virus that we just showed you and the AIDS virus are identical. All right, so if the AIDS virus is a man man manufactured virus, who made it? Do well, we know? Uh, oh, is, is, there, is there anything else you need to say about this? No. Uh, okay. That, that'll be fine on that. Okay. This is People will think that's us talking if, <laughs> we, <laughs> if they don't get off that off the screen. All right. My question, once again, is if this is a man-manufactured virus, mm -hmm. who made it and why? Well, the why I can't answer, but uh, a uh, top official at the uh, Fort Detrick laboratory was asked if we had any uh, foreign agents in there uh, messing around, uh, creating things they shouldn't be doing, and uh, plotting to destroy everybody. This is, was our Biological Warfare Center, which right. is now the National yeah. Cancer Institute, right. yes. Mm -hmm. And he said, of course not. He said, that's ridiculous. So we have scientists here from all over the world. We have scientists here from Russia. We have scientists here from Communist China. They all work all over the place. They have pass keys to all the laboratories. We have no secrets from each other. That was his answer. Oh, all right. He, he, the, he, he meant for the answer to, to be, well, see, there's no problem. We're all working together very nicely here. There's no conspiracy. Well, that's his definition. That's his interpretation. But if you have foreign nationals of unfriendly nations like Russia and Communist China working in our laboratories with pass keys to all the labs, it doesn't look too good to me. Now, the Russians have claimed that the uh, AIDS virus came from Fort Detrick. Yes. So people have accused me and said, we were agreeing with the Russians. And I said, well, not exactly. The, the communists always, they have a clever way of, of, of blaming people on the very things they are doing. They've always done this called reversal. And they'll blame people for things that they're actually doing. Well, they said the lab, the virus was made in the labs over here. Well, they ought to know. They've got their agents right there in the lab. So I would assume that they know what they're talking about. But, now, yeah. didn't Dr. Streaker say that the main portion of the employees of the NCI were unfriendly foreign nationals. This was reported in Dr. Strecker's brother's report called AIDS Alert, in which he pointed out that the, the foreign <coughs> unfriendly nationals had more pass keys to more labs than the Americans did. That's what he reported. Dr. Douglas, are you making a link then between Fort Detrick, which was our biological warfare center, you're saying it was a manufactured virus, the AIDS virus, and the World Health Organization or the yes. WHO and their vaccines. Can you clear that up for us? Well, the World Health Organization has to have someone make the vaccines for them, and I assume that they were made by the NIH uh, for them. So mm -hmm. I don't think you can separate uh, the two entities at all. Uh, a lot of these scientists, I think, are international types where they don't really have any 
allegiance. Allegiance or national mm -hmm. boundaries. They just work mm -hmm. together, as this fellow said. You know, we're all here having a great time, you know, making all these dangerous viruses. But he did say that they were mostly unfriendly foreign nationals. Yes, he did. At the NCI. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. uh, these, the, uh, I'd like to show you an interesting slide with the, uh, with the swine flu uh, to finish up this segment, if we can. Uh, All right. Because I think it's uh, very illustrative of what's going on here. Now, this is the African swine flu virus. Okay. And it looks like that. Mm -hmm. And there's a condition called HBLV in humans, human B lymph lymphotropic virus, which causes uh, leukemia and lymphomas and so forth. And it looks like that. Now, this is what the, you know, the finding down in Bill Glade. And so it, it's further proof that... The animal virus has been, something has been done to it, so it will now infect humans. Are you saying that this was done deliberately then in, in the vaccines in Africa? Well, I don't know. I'm not going to make a, you know, make, take a stand on that. Uh, I have my own opinion on it. But uh, as I said earlier, it's either, it's either manslaughter or it's murder. Uh, okay. I don't uh, see any other, any third. But this virus then was then, then in the vaccines that was given in Africa? No question about it. All right, I told you we're going to hear some revolutionary information here on Accent on Health. I'm grateful that Dr. Douglas has had the courage to bring it to us. You don't have to agree.